Hello there, it's Paul in Perth here. Today what I was hoping to talk to you about is peripheral neuropathy because I know a lot of people suffer from it. I uh, was a sufferer, or technically I still am a sufferer, but I've been able to find a way to get my symptoms vastly reduced to what they used to be. And because I know firsthand how incredibly um, frustrating and um, uh, just angry it makes you when, when you're in that much pain, I feel it's really important just to let you know how I um, solved it, just in case it works for you. The first thing I'd say is that me being the type of guy I am, I went with what was scientifically um, demonstrated to help with peripheral neuropathy, which was um, three trademarked pharmaceuticals, which is progabalin, gabapentin, and duloxetine. I tried progabalin, and I, I suffered from the side effects very, very severely. And from reading online, that's not uncommon. And it was so bad, I had to stop it. Uh, however, for some people, progabalin or gabapentin does work and it does address their side effects. For me, no, the side effects were terrible. The other one is duloxetine. Now, duloxetine is actually, I believe, an anticonvulsant, but it has a side effect of altering the way that you perceive nerve pain. So I started taking duloxetine. Duloxetine, however, is also an antidepressant. So because I have suffered from depression all of my life, I felt like I would give it a go because maybe it would work for the peripheral neuropathy or maybe it would work with the, with the depression. So I am right now still on duloxetine, but we'll come to that later because I, duloxetine is not what, what has actually um, work, worked it for me. Now, so by the time I tried gabapentin, progabalin and duloxetine, I was still having raging peripheral neuropathy. I was in a lot of pain. And what I ended up doing was buying a foot spa. And what I found is by starting off at a lowish temperature, so I'm, I have to talk in Celsius because that, that's the numbers I understand. So if I started with the water at maybe 25 degrees, I would set the temperature to 38 or 39 degrees, which is ever so slightly above um, body temperature. And I would let my feet warm up. Um, to normal body temperature. And I would I was hoping that I'd be able to train my brain to go, okay, this is cold water, this is warm water, this is body temperature water. So now you should be feeling fine. And if, and if I was receiving a signal in my brain different to that, I'd be going, no, no, you're not cold. You're sending me a signal that you're cold, but I know for a fact that your body temperature. And I found this really soothing, and I also use the massage feature because these rollers go, go around when it's plugged in. And I found it soothing. So if, if you are right in the middle of the um, acute phase of um, peripheral neuropathy, maybe consider buying one of these. It's, it cost me just over 100 Australian dollars, which is about 66 American dollars. Uh, and I, I found it helped a fair bit. I don't use it so much um, anymore. So actually, if you're in Perth and you would like this and you're suffering from peripheral neuropathy, I will donate it to you for free because I don't use it as much as I used to. Um, and that's just, just for you if you live in Perth and, and you're suffering from PM. Now, the th what caught me was there were a lot of people that were talking about supplements that they were using for their peripheral neuropathy. And anecdotally, they were telling me that they were having good success with various things. So the things that were being recommended to me were um, palmitoyl ethanolamide, otherwise known as PEA, and um, alpha lipoic acid, and L-carnitine. Now, the trouble with all of these is because they're not sponsored by a company like gabapentin, progabalin, and duloxetine, they don't have these huge um, studies behind them to show scientifically that they definitely work or don't. And because my mind likes to have evidence, I didn't really embrace them very much at the start. And that was to my detriment, as it turns out. So the way, so what happened was in the early days, I tried alpha lipoic acid and I tried L-carnitine. Now let's just start with the alpha lipoic acid. I'll just pop up on the screen here. So Caroline, if you can just make this like a gap, yep. That there is the actual bottle of alpha lipoic acid that I, that I bought. And you'll notice that it just says alpha lipoic acid. It doesn't tell you whether it's the left-handed or the right-handed molecule. Now, when you read 
online, you'll find um, that there have been some studies done showing that the right-handed molecule is much more effective than the left-handed molecule. But, but this bottle here that I bought doesn't tell me whether it's left or right-handed. And I just took it. I took it um, one tablet a day until the bottle ran out. Nothing really happened. So I just went, oh, well, alpha lopaic acid is not for me. Now that I've... Now that I've had other experiences that I'm about to tell you, I'm not convinced that it wouldn't, that it definitely doesn't work for me because I didn't take it probably for long enough and I don't know whether I was having the right or the left-handed molecule or a combination of both. While we're on that, to look up the left and the right-handed molecule, for right-handed alpha-lopaic acid, you'll need to search for R-ALA. For the left-handed molecule, you'll need to search for S-ALA. And you're going to say, why is it S when it's left-handed molecule? The answer, as often, comes down to Latin. So the word for right in Latin is rectus. And the word for left in Latin is sinister. So you're actually looking at the rectus molecule and the sinister molecule. I'm going to talk about more of them later, so we'll come back to that. So alpha acid, I tried it and it didn't work for me, but I was naive in the way I was using it. And similarly with L-carnitine, I simply took, um, I was taking one every night with the L-carnitine and I went, kept going till the bottle ran out and nothing happened. So I decided, you know, nothing to be gained there. Now, when it comes to um, palmitoyl ethanol amine, different story. What happened there was I was at my chemist and the chemist, a guy called Mitchell, that I've known for going on 10 years and I really trust, said, hey, Paul, why don't you try PEA? And I said, what, what's that? He says, oh, it's, it's palmitoyl ethanol amide. It's really good for nerve pain. It works in two out of three people. But the thing is, you need to take it for up to three months before it starts working. And, and see, here's the difference. Instead of it being something I was reading on the internet, it was a person in front of me that I really trusted and he it was explaining to me exactly what I needed to do. So he sold me this bottle here, which you can you can zoom in on. And as you can see, that's Pharmacy 777. However, you can buy this from any um, compounding chemist that you like. Now, as it turns out, it, I was very close to the three month mark before this started to work, but work it did. And had it not been for Mitchell assuring me that for most people it worked, I wouldn't have kept on going. Because three months, or going on three months with no result, it's very easy to just go, I'm throwing my money away. But because I trusted him, I kept going. And then I was saying to Caroline, um, uh, probably three weeks ago, I was going, I don't know if I'm imagining it or not, but I feel like my peripheral neuropathy is getting a bit better, and it's receding. And what I'd actually noticed, and, and you know, sorry if you're not in defeat, or congratulations if you are in defeat, <laughs> What I found was instead of being my whole foot, what was, and how it is now, is it's now concentrated, this part of my foot has a bit of residual peripheral neuropathy, but the heel part of my foot has almost none. Um, so it's, and, and obviously it's the peripheral part. So I'm mainly feeling it here. And even then it's weird because I feel it on the inside of my big toe. There I've got pins and needles, but here I don't. Oh, actually I do slightly, but not as much as there. So it's weird because what's happened is instead of being there, the area has shrunk to there, and instead of being intense, it's quite mild. So I haven't had a complete remission, but what I have had is a reduction where it's gone from being completely maddening me to something I actually can ignore. So to me, that's, that's as good as it gets. Now, you might ask, how do you know whether it was the PEA or the duloxetine that um, has caused the reduction in symptoms. Okay, here's what happened. About a week ago, I forgot to take my morning medication. And in that morning medication was my PEA and my geloxetine. And by the afternoon, my peripheral neuropathy was starting to come back and I had to get out the, the foot, foot spa. And then I thought, okay, but before I tell everyone on YouTube about this, I need to work out which one of these two things has it actually been. So what I did was later in that week, one morning, I, I omitted the duloxetine only, <clears throat> excuse me, and I did take the PEA. And what I found was by that afternoon, I 
didn't have the peripheral neuropathy come back. So I know that it's actually the PEA that's done it. And I also know that you need to take it twice a day because evidently it lasts for about 16 hours and it is obviously highly cumulative. That's why it took three months to become effective. Now, because I'm a tight ass, I wanna tell you that from Pharmacy 777, this bottle is 100 Australian dollars and it's got 300, 300 milligram tablets. I went online to see if I could um, save some money and I found a compounding chemist in Margaret River of all places that does 300 capsules of 500 milligrams for only slightly more, including delivery to your house. So I'll put the um, details down of um, this chemist if you're in Australia, and I'll even give you a discount code to get 10% off. And just so there's no weirdness between us, you're gonna get 10% off and I get a $10 credit for recommending it to you, okay? So I, I will get a little bit, but you, you're actually gonna save more money than, than I'm gonna get. So PEA has worked for me. Now, this was a, a bit of a, a mind bender for me because I finally had to go, hang on, Big Pharma actually have manipulated me here because I was very much focused on the um, official pharmaceuticals and very much not really that into the, um, the supplements. And, and by the way, this, this stuff is so cheap because it's derived from soybeans and eggs. It's, it's getting the, the raw materials to make this is incredibly easy for these um, compounding chemists. So they sell it easy, they sell it cheap. You can buy it anywhere. And because you can buy it anywhere, um, there's no profit in it for anyone to do an extensive study, whereas there is for gabapentin, pregabalin and, and geloxetine. So in summary, uh, I'm starting to change my mind on how I feel about these complementary um, or non-big farm products, because I, I can categorically tell you that in at least one case, the, um, the supplements have actually done something that Big Pharma has not been able to, and it's really cheap and completely available. You don't even need a script. You just need to go to a compounding chemist. You'll be able to buy this anywhere in the world from a compounding chemist. And if you are suffering from peripheral neuropathy and you're going through that incredible pain, I know how desperate you are. So please feel free to, to give it a go. Now, I'll just quickly, I wanna go through, so that's the end of the pharmaceutics part of this video. Now I wanna talk about, um, cause you know I love etymology. So firstly, I wanna show you the alpha lipoic acid. So up on the screen now, I'll pop, pop up the left and the right handed molecules of alpha lipoic acid. Good work, Caroline. <laughs> yeah, nicely done, yeah. So that's the left and the right handed molecules there. <laughs> and um, as you can see, they're mirror images of each other. Now, you need to think of um, molecules as like a key going into a lock. And if a key fits a lock, then if you made a mirror image of it, it then wouldn't fit the lock. So even though the molecules have exactly the same um, chemical components, the the structure of the molecule is really important. So whereas the left-handed molecule um, with ALA is effective, the right-handed molecule is twice as effective. So come down to me. Now you'll notice the name L-carnitine implies that it's left carnitine. And I've not been able to work out whether that is or isn't the case, but the name carnitine is interesting. The reason it's called carnitine comes from carnivores, or, or if you speak Spanish or Italian, you'd know carne means, means meat. And the reason that carnitine is called carnitine is in 1905, it was first isolated from meat. Okay, so a lot of the carnitine you get in your diet actually comes from red, red meat, or if you're a, veg, a vegetarian or vegan, it's coming from um, other, other vegetables that, that still have carnitine in it. But carnivores will get a lot more carnitine in their diet than, than a vegan or vegetarian will. So that's uh, carnitine. Now, I wanted to talk about, okay, so we said that Latin for right, well, this is your right, this is my right, but the Latin for right is rectus. Now, I wanna give you some words in English that are de derived from that. So to rectify means to make right or to put straight. That's where that comes from. A rectangle is made up of four right angles, okay? And 
To make something erect means to make it straight and to, to point it 90 degrees to the ground, which obviously is where the word erection comes from, but we don't have to um, go on that one. Or to direct means to put someone straight. When you direct someone, that's what you're doing. You're setting them straight. And now just to talk about a bit of anatomy, and let's all be adults here, your rectum is the part of your intestines that goes straight up. So the rectum goes straight up, and at the top of that, it does an S-bend that goes around and down and up in the shape of an S. And that's called your sigmoid colon. And the reason it's called the sigmoid colon, oh, excuse me. <laughs> I don't know if you heard that, but that was um, my, my, my stoma just burnt <laughs> right when we're talking about sigmoid colon, so it must have been listening. Uh, the sigmoid colon is in the shape of the lowercase Greek sigma, letter, letter, of, letter sigma, which is S, S in Greek. So that's why it's called the sigmoid colon. Uh, yeah, and that's all I've got. Just talking about carne, though. Carne is where you get meat. Um, oh, sorry, I'll talk about left in a second. Yep. So we've got carnitine, carnivore. The flower carnation, it's called a carnation because they're, the, many of them are flesh-coloured. You know, they're pink or they're red. And incarnate. When you say that someone is the devil incarnate, it literally means that is the devil in the flesh. That's where that comes from. And as Carolyn points out, the Latin word for left is sinister. So this is your left. And sinister is a word in English that means evil. And unfortunately for the left-handers of the world, uh, left-handers were seen in, in prior, prior ages as being evil or, or a little bit, you know, um, scary or what have you and they were seen as being sinister people. Now, I must categorically say that is wrong. My Two of my best friends in the world, which is my brother Noel and my best friend Caroline, are both left-handers, and they are both wonderful people. So, yep, and there is Caroline's, that is your left hand there. <laughs> there we go, so left-handers aren't sinister, so that's where that comes from. Okay, so there you go. I hope that's helped for anyone that's got peripheral neuropathy. Um, if you have... Oh, if you have an experience with beating peripheral neuropathy, please put it down in the comments, but give it to it to me fairly verbosely. What do you take? How often do you take it? How long did it take effect? And if you skip a dose, does it come back or not? Or did your peripheral neuropathy resolve itself after several years anyway? Hoping to hear from you soon. Glad to hear from you. Don't forget to click that care button and best of luck with your peripheral neuropathy. I know how maddening it is. See you later. Bye.